This video could be misinterpreted, so I want to be clear that I think the safest conclusion to draw from it is that we should test our assumptions. I have read so much about bond tents and equity glide path strategies that I thought it necessary to run some tests. Bond tents or equity glide path strategies are thought to protect against sequence of return risk. Uh, what does that mean? Well, it means that it can be really damaging to a retiree's portfolio to experience bad luck returns, really, really poor returns right at the beginning of retirement. And so it's tempting to do things at the uh, beginning of retirement that guard against that risk. A common sense strategy is to make your allocations much more conservative in the first year of retirement and maybe build up to that right in those uh, couple of years or longer perhaps, right before retirement, build up to a very conservative uh, allocation so that at retirement and then for a few years afterward, if there is some really bad luck and your portfolio takes a nosedive, your uh, conservative allocation should uh, protect you. Well, it's really important to test strategies because as you'll see, I, through this testing that I'm gonna show you, um, found some things that, that I found surprising, especially given that so many very smart people mentioned bond tents or these, these glide path strategies of adjusting allocations to be very conservative at the beginning of retirement. Um, they're, they're frequently mentioned as a, as a reasonable strategy. So to show these tests, I'm going to begin with a baseline model. I'm in Seafire Sim, and uh, I'm assuming a 40-year retirement, a, a portfolio of $1,500,000 at the beginning of retirement, initial yearly spending of $52,500, which is a 3.5% uh, withdrawal rate. And I'm also using Vanguard style dynamic spending. You can find um, other videos I've recorded about that. It's really not that important what, what these inputs are because this video is about comparisons between different models. And I kept all of these things the same across the different models. So it doesn't matter what your opinion is about a 3.5% withdrawal rate, for, for example. What matters is that these inputs remain the same across all of the different comparisons. Now in this first model, the baseline model, notice I have selected here, keep the allocation constant. In other words, there is no glide path, there is no bond tent in this, in this model. Instead, the retiree apparently is comfortable with this rather aggressive allocation and keeping it fixed across every year of this 40 year retirement. Okay, so this is the baseline model for comparison. What does Seafire Sim tell us? This baseline model has a 99% chance of success. In other words, looking at historical data, it almost always lasts the full 40 years. I bet that one failure was in the late 1960s. Yep, it was 1966, because the late 60s was a, a really unlucky time to be, uh, to be retiring, given all the things that happened after that. In other words, um, retirees in the late 60s experienced really lousy sequence, uh, a really lousy sequence of returns. This media number, what it tells us, is there was almost four million extra dollars, typically. Okay, that's why this is the median. So if a retiree retired at a time that was very average, they would have ended up with almost four million extra dollars in retirement. But of course, they can also retire at a time of rather poor luck, maybe not as bad as 1966, but I like to look down here at the 10th percentile to get an idea of what would have happened if they had kind of run-of-the-mill bad luck, okay? So, so years that were not good to start retirement, but not the very worst year. And the answer is that at the 10th percentile, a retiree with all of those, uh, with that strategy shown, 
um, would would end up with about one million one hundred eighty nine thousand extra dollars. So that's the baseline model. And now the question is, when we start implementing bond tent strategies, or in other words, equity glide path strategies, uh, do we see any evidence that these strategies really can protect from bad luck in the early years of, of, of retirement, or in other words, sequence of return risk? To save time, I'm not going to show you everything that I did in Seafire Sim, and I'm not even showing you all of the models I ran. I ran these models with all historical data available. I ran these models with retirements starting in the late 1960s. I tried a lot of different things, but those inputs that you saw in Seafire Sim always stayed the same. The only thing that I changed across models B, C, D, and E, and other models that I tested, is the, the the glide path or bond tent strategy used okay so model a is the one that i just showed you with a 99 percent success rate and extra money both at the median and at the 10th percentile but look at this model b uses a really quite aggressive strategy because in year one of retirement um, this retiree uses only a 30 percent allocation to stocks and a 70% allocation to bonds. And then, because it's a 10-year glide path, uh, over 10 years, the allocation of the portfolio drifts to an 80% stocks to 20% bonds allocation, okay? This, this quite aggressive uh, strategy has a success rate that's lower, 88%. And the median amount of extra money is a little over a million dollars and the 10th percentile amount if this retiree uh, experienced quasi normal quasi typical bad luck they could run out of money which is also reflected in the success rate percentage they have a 12 percent chance of of failure okay now you can look at that and you could say yeah but who starts with a 30 percent allocation to stocks that is ultra conservative uh, okay, I've, I've seen it in at least one blo uh, blog post, but all right. So let's look at what happens with a 10-year glide path in which the retiree starts with a 50-50 allocation that drifts over 10 years to an 80-20 allocation. Well, yes, the success rate is better. It's 96%. Uh, the median amount of extra money is over $2 million. And at the 10th percentile, uh, the amount of extra money is over $500,000. So, of course, uh, that, that does look like the better, uh, for many people perhaps, uh, that does look like the better glide path strategy to choose rather than what we saw with Model B. Um, but still, you know, let's let's reflect on that for a moment. That that's showing some effort to make the uh, the the portfolio allocation more conservative at the beginning of retirement to guard against sequence of return risk. And what we end up with, um, I, I would be satisfied with this, sure. But but what we end up with is something that has worse outcomes than a static 80-20 allocation. Well, um, what if we did something, what if we had a glide path that wasn't quite 10 years? You know, maybe if we shorten it, we can see some, some better numbers. All right, so model D is starting again with that very conservative allocation at the beginning, 30-70, then it drifts to 80-20, but now only over five years. What do we get? Well, we get actually the lowest success rate in this table, 84%. And the median amount of extra money, a little bit less than a million dollars. At the 10th percentile, zero dollars. Okay, well, what about it? Uh, starting that five-year glide path instead with a 50-50 allocation, which, as we saw earlier, maybe is uh, it can be a better choice. And um, as, the, as the allocation drifts over five years to an 80-20 allocation, Yes, we get a better success rate, 96%. Uh, at, at the median, about two million extra dollars. At the 10th percentile, almost $400,000. I would point out there may be psychological reasons 
uh, that retirees would would choose uh, a, a glide path or bond tent strategy like C or E. Uh, that is understandable. Personal finance is personal. I have never heard a smart financial advisor uh, say that bond tents are right for everyone or that static uh, aggressive allocations are right for everyone. Um, and, and that is not a, a, a takeaway from, from this video that everybody should always be avoiding bond tents. I think the key takeaway is that we should test our assumptions because uh, in all of the analyses I ran, I was disappointed with how little bond tents or glide path strategies actually protected from sequence of return risk in the long run. Now, bond tents or equity glide paths may still have their purposes. I recommend that anyone testing glide path or bond tent strategies complement those tests with reading on the Early Retirement Now blog. You can see this uh, part 20 is one blog post that I found especially helpful. It's because the data analyses are very detailed and the conclusions are quite clear. To give you an idea, one conclusion is that when the CAPE is below 20, there is no benefit from a glide path. That may be one reason that I was seeing the results that I saw in Seafire Sim. In addition, it says glide paths are useful when equities are expensive, i.e. when the CAPE is greater than 20. At the time I'm recording this, the CAPE is notably higher than that. Um, in addition, uh, he tests a variety of uh, glide paths, and I won't take the time to show you the impressive tables, uh, but he notes that a 60 to 100 percent glide path, uh, that glide path has consistently the best withdrawal rates, assuming the CAPE is greater than 20. So those are just some of the conclusions that this careful author reaches uh, as the result of, of many data analyses. So please do complement your tests of glide path or bond tent strategies with careful reading on the Early Retirement Now blog. One conclusion people might draw from reading the Early Retirement Now blog and conducting tests of various bond tent or equity glide path strategies is that bond tents may be useful in some specific circumstances, but it may be more powerful for retirement planners to focus on withdrawal rates and dynamic spending strategies. They may be more powerful ways of mitigating sequence of return risk.